This is Scott Becker with the Becker Private Equity Podcast. Today's discussion, we've got Amber Walsh to talk to us about physician-owned hospitals, the good, the bad, the ugly. She's going to give us a sense of the history of it, how the industry continues to thrive and survive, and a lot more. Uh, Amber, why don't you take a moment and tell us about sort of what's happening in the physician-owned hospital world? Absolutely. And, and it would probably be helpful to just talk about the industry generally, how broad is the physician-owned hospital industry, and what do we mean by that term? There are approximately, and we have to estimate because there's no real public reporting mechanism for this, but there are approximately 250 hospitals around the country where physicians own some portion. Somewhere between 1% and 100% you have physician ownership as compared with totally uh, for-profit owned hospitals or not-for-profit. There tends to be a conflagration in a small handful of states. So for many, many Americans, they have no physician-owned hospital, not even in their county, but in their state. The largest number of physician-owned hospitals is in Texas by far, but there is a strong POH community in Louisiana, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Oklahoma, Indiana, California, but there are many, many states in which not a single hospital in that state has any physician ownership. So that gives you a little bit of an understanding of just how broad the market is. Certainly at one point, people might have thought that physician hospitals were outlawed, that physicians weren't allowed to own hospitals. But, but tell us just quickly for our audience the nuance there. And I guess if you're in the 30 or so states that almost no physician owned hospitals, as a hospital executive, this probably has no impact on you. But in the 10 or so states where they're really concentrated, it might have an impact. But, but at one point, what, tell us what is the issue with ownership by physicians of hospitals? Absolutely. And I would argue that even if you are in a state where there's no physician-owned hospital, the issue can impact you as a hospital executive or patient or, or otherwise. So physician ownership in hospitals has been allowed by Stark since almost the beginning of the Stark law. But it was pursuant to a specific exemption to Stark where physicians could refer patients to a hospital in which they were an owner called the whole hospital exception. And before the ACA in 2010, it was a relatively simple um, light touch exemption. Now there were periods of time before the ACA in 2010 where there were moratoriums on new physician owned hospitals. So if you have somewhat of an understanding of the history of this issue, you would be right to say, well, I thought there, I thought that had stopped. And it is true. Before the ACA in 2010, there were periods of time where existing physician-owned hospitals could continue to see Medicare, Medicaid patients, but that no new such hospitals were being built. Then the ACA came along. And there's a little known provision of the ACA, again, what people refer to as Obamacare, March 23rd, 2010, a little known provision, section 6001, that halted the ongoing proliferation of physician-owned hospitals. Those who existed and were already certified by Medicare as of that date in 2010 could continue to exist but there are expansion limitations and a, a whole host of new rules that went into place for even those that existed on that date. And, and so I guess the perception would have been if they were outlawed, at least new ones in 2010, 2012, around that era, that at, by this point, they would have mostly died in the vine. Is that true? Or are some of these things still doing terrific? What's the sense of what's out there? That's a great question. There are some extraordinarily successful physician-owned hospitals. We have lost several over the years, though. There are many physician-owned hospitals that, just like community-owned or not-for-profit, did not do well uh, for a variety of reasons. So there have been several lost physician-owned hospitals that did die on the vine. 
And even though in 2010, even though the industry basically became somewhat stagnant in that no new physician-owned hospitals can be built, those who existed have found a way largely to be successful. There are many, many successful ones. Now, that industry, the POH industry, would also say in many cases that they want to expand. There's community needs that they want to be able to serve, but because of the limitation on their ability to expand their facilities, a limitation on the number of beds, ORs, or procedure rooms, that they can't grow as much and serve the community as much as they would like. But there are many, many successful hospitals that have been able to continue and serve their community. Thank you. And what does the prognosis look like the next decade or so? I mean, it seems like a lot of those physicians on hospitals must have had owners that were in specialties, and some of those owners are getting older or slowing down. Um, some maybe new owners come in, but obviously over the last decade, more physicians have become employed by hospitals. What does the next decade look like for physician or hospitals? And is there any chance of relief to unwind that provision, 6001, from the ACA to allow new physician or hospitals to be built? Um, yes, yeah, those are all great questions. So just to give a little flavor for the specialty focus of most physician owned hospitals, the majority are focused on orthopedic and spine. However, the industry isn't just limited to those specialties. And to your point about succession planning and retirement, a lot of expansion of services is a part of the dialogue that physician owned hospitals have should they stay focused on their original core services. The other service lines that you do see in physician-owned hospitals, it can run the full gamut, but you do see some uh, cardiology and CV-focused hospitals. Um, there was a renal-focused hospital, a few psych hospitals, rehab, a women's hospital, and you do see that kind of expansion of services a little bit. Um, and so that does certainly go into the, the dialogue for succession planning. But to your other question, which is, what is the outlook? Certainly the industry continues to be highly focused on eliminating, changing uh, Section 6001. So I don't foresee that the physician-owned hospital industry will ever stop pushing for a complete elimination of Section 6001, that ban on growth for physician and hospitals. And in any given year, you do tend to see activity, legislative activity. There are some well-known and constant uh, political supporters. Uh, Senator Langford out of Oklahoma, he has a lot of uh, physician and hospitals in his state. Um, fellow Republican Congressman uh, Burgess out of Texas, they've introduced many pieces of legislation over the years. And occasionally you do have some Democratic support for that. Um, uh, Representative Cuellar in Texas 28th has been supportive. He's got uh, POHs uh, in his district. So the legislative activity will absolutely, I think, continue. And it takes a variety of forms. Sometimes it's pushing to eliminate the ban. Sometimes it's pushing to simply allow a little bit more expansion for those that exist. But I think that will run a dual pathway to just the industry continuing to try to thrive while existing under the current regulatory regime. And are there any large health systems that have invested in physician-owned hospitals as joint ventures? Is, is that part of the landscape? And how much is that part of the landscape? Yes, absolutely. And it's very interesting. Um, universally across the country, you have a tenant through USPI invested in many physician-owned hospitals. USPI was one of the early pioneers in physician partnerships for hospitals. And that has continued in the USPI uh, tenant, you know, since the tenant USPI uh, deal happened several years ago. So they are very active. There are a few large uh, surgery center management companies who also invest in and manage physician-owned hospitals. 
SCA, PSC, there are several others. And then on an individual basis, and this is what I find particularly fascinating, and it can be really, really successful for a community, is on an individual hospital level, not necessarily a national hospital uh, chain, but on an individual basis, you do see general acute care uh, hospital systems investing alongside physicians in a physician-owned hospital for a reason that meets their particular community's needs. So you absolutely do see that. Thank you. And if you were to talk about sort of like um, one of the big issues has been to physician-owned hospitals, cherry pick cases, not serve, you know, indigent patients, Medicaid patients, stuff like that. A any thoughts there? What are the big hot issues that people talk about? What's controversial, say, with physician-owned hospitals? Yes, and, and you went straight to the heart of why the physician-owned hospital industry has always been vulnerable to attack from opponents. What opponents of physician ownership in hospitals say is that, yes, uh, the number one thing you hear is that physician-owned hospitals cherry-pick the healthiest patients with the best insurance and don't um, serve the community in terms of charity care, Medicaid population, et cetera, and that on top of this, and this is what opponents say, on top of that, it is a self-dealing issue that is inappropriate for physicians to refer to a business in which they own and that the Stark Law protections that otherwise permit physicians to refer to certain businesses aren't enough to protect when it comes to referrals to hospitals. That's what opponents say. I am personally and unabashedly in disagreement with the opponents. Um, I am usually pretty down the middle on a lot of different political issues in healthcare, but I have been representing PHA the Trade Association for Physician and Hospitals for 17 of my 22 years of practice. So I am unabashedly in favor of physician ownership. And I'll give you the physician owner's perspective. Uh, proponents of POHs point to the high quality, uh, the star ratings, certain uh, reports that uh, show the savings to the Medicare uh, system, that enhancing competition elevates healthcare for everyone, so that when you allow physicians to lead healthcare and compete for, for the best uh, services, that that is good for everyone. So it's certainly, there are certainly two uh, vastly different perspectives on this, and they've been, you know, kind of going head to head for multiple decades now on whether or not it is appropriate for physicians to be leading owning in hospitals. Amber, thank you so much for joining us on the Becker Private Equity Podcast to talk about physician hospitals. I know you've been watching the sector for a long time. What a fascinating area and amazing how it's continued to thrive now with all the legislative push against it. Thank you again for joining us today on the Becker Private Equity Podcast. Thank you.